Good morning, friends, and welcome back. I love this project that I'm going to show you how to do. These are all paper towel holders from just at the end of my paper towels. I took these inserts and I turned them into this. And you may have a fireplace like we do that we don't use all spring and summer, and it's nice to put some wood in there, but rather than spend a bunch of money on the real thing, we can make these, which you can also stand up in a nice metal container in the corner of your room because this birch wood tends to look very decorative and pretty in a room. So here's the first step in this. You take these empty paper towel rollers, you could do this with toilet paper rolls and make them at different lengths. Uh, it's a lot easier with the paper towel holders. And this is low tack tape. You really want to use any tape that you can paint over. If you use scotch tape, that won't hold the paint. It's not good with the decoupage glue. It won't cover this uh, section. So you just want to use the tape. And don't worry too much about how it looks because we're going to cover a multitude of sins between the paint the glue and the decoupage, you'll see in the end how you don't even see this. So just cover up the two ends. You can also use wrapping paper rolls. Just be careful. Sometimes the wrapping paper rolls are so thin and flimsy it makes it impossible to do this. And one quick thing that I'd like to mention, if you go over to my website and the link is just below this video, I will also show you a way that you can put a filler inside of this and the perfect product to use. I'll have links to it on my website. Now, uh, by the way, I used 10, I believe 10 paper towel holders to tape them together so that I would have five different logs. And I'm just using chalk paint. You can use acrylic. I just tend to prefer the chalk paint. And you want to make sure you go with an off-white color. That will make this look much more authentic underneath the napkins. If this tape starts to come undone a little bit, that's okay. We're going to be working with some hot glue from our glue gun, and that is imperative for this project. And once I was done painting everything, I stood them up on their ends so that they could dry. And don't worry about how messy this looks right now. It's drying and you can see all of these bumps, but they'll really look much better as we finish this. Now I'm going to take my hot glue gun and I am going to add some thick strands of glue. And the reason for that is to make this look a bit more branch-like. No branch is completely smooth, especially the outside. The bark tends to have a lot of ridges, but you'll want to keep this going in one direction only. And make sure you add this very sporadically. Some of the lines are going to be short and fat. Some of them are long and thin. As long as you're moving in one direction and you just, like nature, you make things imperfect. And really, I found this part to be kind of very relaxing and fun. that the tube now looks like this when you're done. So now to decoupage, we want to separate these napkins and you want to use napkin decoupage glue. The link below will take you over to my website. You can get all of these supplies right over there on the page. I have links to them. So you want to separate this napkin. Make sure you keep all of your napkins going in the proper direction. And we just want the top ply of this napkin. Once you've got the top ply of that napkin, you're going to wrap it around the bottom half of your tube. Make sure there's a little overlap at the end here. And now we don't want this whole napkin piece. So what I'm going to do, you can wet this if you'd like. It does make it easier to tear. But I'm just going to tear away the section that I need. And that way I can use the other half of the napkin on the top part of this roll. So just tear away this napkin. And it's okay to have a little bit of an overlap on the ends here. In other words, this end right here, there's a straight edge, which is okay for this project. And I'm going to start to decoupage. And because I'm using napkin decoupage glue, I can do the dry method 
So here's the overlap on this end, and I'm going to take a soft bristle brush and a lot of decoupage glue, and over my dry surface, I'm applying the napkin decoupage glue, which sinks through the napkin. It helps so much to avoid tearing, to avoid wrinkles. Now you can push this in right now with the brush. Decoupage that down on the inside and use your brush to just continue to decoupage this way the whole napkin down on this roll. Now as you're decoupaging, and this is one of the reasons you want to use a bristle brush and the napkin decoupage glue, this is going around these strands of glue that we put in there. I want to see if you could see that. So you see that it kind of looks a little veiny. This napkin decoupage glue is helping the napkin just almost look like you're painting it right over this surface. So here's something else that adds to the more realistic look of these. Once these were painted and dried, I took a pair of scissors and I cut up the center because I realized when you get these logs or branches, they tend not to be all the exact same width. So what I wanted to do was make them a little thinner. So I cut with scissors right up the center. I then squeezed them together and I took this hot glue once again and put it inside there. Be careful not to burn yourself. I accidentally burnt myself a couple of times here, as I always do. And you can make these in different widths. I kept three of them the same width and two of them I went thinner. So I knew I would want three of these on the bottom and two on the top of my pile of logs. And you can see the difference in the width of these here. By the way, you would want to make them thinner before you added the glue to these other outside pieces. Now you can see I'm going over the seam a little bit, but you don't have to go over the seam. That napkin is going to cover up so much you won't be able to see the seam at all. The way I did this was while one half of the tube was drying, I went back and got my other dried piece and then did the second half. And normally I tell you we don't like any hard edges, so I want you to tear the napkin edges. But in this case, we didn't need to do it. So you can see right here, there's a straight edge on the dry part of the tube where the napkin ends. And I'm just going to line up the pattern right there. It's not complicated at all. And I'm now going to decoupage this end of the napkin. Make sure you have enough napkin there so that it overlaps. You don't want any of the paint below showing through. And once you've separated the napkin, just line it up and decoupage it the same way. Make sure you load your brush up with a lot of decoupage glue. This isn't a case where you want to go lightly or have a light hand. You need a lot of decoupage glue so that it sinks through the napkin and into the little crevices that we've created with the glue. By the way, I took several bottles and I placed these over top of the bottles in order for them to dry. And I put them near a heat vent. You can put them outside if it's a dry, sunny day. And I'm just going to let those dry now. So you can see some of these are half done. And I put the wet spot up at the top because I knew that heat rises. Sorry, I'm right between the uh, recycling and the trash can. <laughs> but I wanted to show you how I set this up and it made it a lot uh, it dried a lot quicker. When these were dry, I went back to these ends and I took a smaller brush and I just decoupaged the inside. This one turned out to be a little too large. It was pulling the napkins out. But I did want to tell you, if these are something that you're going to stand up or if they're going to be seen from a side, mine are going in the fireplace so no one can see the sides of them and you want them to look very realistic, on my website, I have the link to a product where you can stuff these with newspapers and then you put this product in that it swells up, it dries, you can cut off the end and make it flush and decoupage the same paper right over it to make it look very authentic. 
Now, in order to spray these with a matte varnish, because most wood does not look shiny, I put a piece of wax paper over a few wine bottles and I stood these tubes up over the wine bottles. That was to secure them so they didn't tip over. Now, I didn't have the Liquitex matte acrylic sealer, so I went with this one, which I'm not wild about. I have the Liquitex spray on my website. It's a much faster process when you use the spray. And I took these outside, and I have a large box that I keep for my paint projects. You can see it's a mess in there. And I have a Lazy Susan down there. And this allowed me to spray this matte coat as evenly as I could over all of these tubes. You want to make sure you get every side, um, the top, the bottom. Just be as thorough as you can. I then brought them inside in the foyer. Uh, up at a the, the landing on the steps. There's a plant light in here. That's why it looks a little ultraviolet. Uh, it's coming out. Most of the blue is getting picked up. But I just wanted to let them dry, so I let them sit there out of sight from everyone. And now here's how these look now that they're dry. I'm very excited with the way these came out. Now I just want to do a couple of more things to these. And one of them is I would like to add some twine around the center. And I found out that it is much easier if I put a large rubber band. I don't know if you watched my video last week where I decoupaged a planter and I used these large rubber bands. It was much easier to put a rubber band around the end and that kept them in place. And make sure the rubber band isn't too tight. You want it a little loose or it will crush those tubes that you're putting them around. Then I just went around one time with the twine and I twied it in, twied it, I tied it in the center and then just kept wrapping the string around the tubes, which we can really call logs now. Now here's how these look now that I'm all done with the twine around the center. And I'm going to take some glitter. I really want to have a little bit of a snowy look on these. So I'm going to take some glue and glitter. So I just took this clear drying craft glue and put it sporadically around the pieces. So it looked a little bit like fresh fallen snow, a little bit of that sparkle. And then my husband walked by, so I decided to leave his comment in the video here. Let's talk a little bit about journey. No, it's going to be a cool video, isn't it? Yeah. The only thing is... Aside from the glitter, yeah, you don't see many bark streaks with glitter on it, but... <laughs> uh, I'm going to keep that in the video. You definitely should. Oh, well. You got to have glitter on. Okay, <laughs> sure. See, she said I'm channeling mom, so... Hi babies. So how many times do I put um, a bit a video up and somebody goes, where's the glitter? Where's the glitter? I know, they always do that. <laughs> he knows me too well with that glitter. I'll have the uh, link for the glitter over there on my website too because this glitter tends to be very fiery and chunky. I do want the larger chunky type of glitter as opposed to the tiny fine glitter on a larger project like this and to make it look like the fresh fallen snow. Here's what these look like now that they're dry. And I love that I can take uh, anything out of our fireplace now and just put these inside of there with a few little candles that will really show off the glitter. And don't forget, you can also stand these up on their sides in a nice metal container somewhere in your living room or bedroom because it's still a very nice decorative touch. So guys, that is our video for the week. I'm pretty excited over this one. It is a true upcycle because you would probably just throw those tubes away from the inside of your wrapping paper or the paper towels. So once again, thank you so much for subscribing. It's so important to subscribe so that we can stay over here on YouTube. 
I have a Facebook page called Upcycle with Decoupage. If you go over and like and follow the page, you'll be notified every week when I put a new video out. And that will also tell you, it'll keep you up to date on when I put new videos on Patreon. If you'd like to go over and just have a look around Patreon, the link is down below for my channel there where I will be doing the furniture projects very soon. Although I have several videos over there right now that you can watch. That is a pay-per-view site where you can support the arts. And in the meantime, my friends, thank you so much for hanging out with me here and watching the videos. I can't get back to everyone. When you subscribe to me on Patreon, I can speak to everyone over there. I do read all of your comments. So again, guys, thank you for subscribing, for checking out my Facebook page, for looking at my papers on Zazzle. I am coming out with new uh, papers and projects and videos and just non-stop. So <laughs> that's all because of you. Thank you so much. I really can't tell you how humbling that is and how grateful I am. By the way, there is a page on Facebook called Decoupage Designs and Furniture Madness. And if you go over and make a friend request on that page, there are about four or five moderators on there who can help you almost any time around the clock, no matter where you live. They can really help you out when you really need a question answered about decoupage or anything to do with decoupage. So thanks a lot, friends. I will see you guys next week with another video. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll talk to you in about a week. Bye-bye.